Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. And quantum consciousness is changing us from the inside out, and the current energies are supporting us in such beautiful ways. We continue on our ascension path. Our multidimensional DNA is coming online, says my guest today, quantum healer and ascension activator and master alchemist, Meg Benedicte. Let's welcome Meg back to Quantum Conversations. Hi, Meg. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Oh, hi, Loren. It's so great to be here. I always love connecting with you. We always have amazing conversations, so thank you for having me on your show. We are looking really forward to this conversation today because of the incredible information that you bring forward on Ascension. And right now, these energies, let's talk a little bit about them. We are feeling it in a multitude of ways. There's a number of reports from people about just being tired or dizzy or mm -hmm. um, really needing to just slow down and be. And it's uh, pretty interesting. Can you share with us your intel? What's going on? Well, what I've been observing as well in myself and, and just watching kind of the planetary field since the beginning of the year, we, you know, we, we see if you, you read any kind of um, news from spaceweather.com that there's a lot of powerful solar winds that are coming to the planet um, released from our sun. And it's different than what we were experiencing in the earlier years of solar flares. That, that was actually kind of zapping us with very powerful electrical current, light current, and a lot of gamma ray, photon light coming in. This is different. And this is why it's feeling different, I think, to many of us who are kind of hypersensitive and, and the body is, you know, really responding to it. These aren't solar flares. These are solar winds. And so it's actually affecting the magnetic aspect of our planet and our energy fields instead of the light current. And what I've been watching as we go through these waves, because we've had several, maybe what, three or four since the beginning of the year, last couple months, they've really picked up speed. And as the solar wind comes in, think of it, it's altering the magnetic poles, it's altering the magnetic field on the planet, and it's altering the magnetics in our own body, our own aura. And as I see the magnetic field, so these are morphological fields that kind of layer and wrap around the organs and around the chakras, and, and they hold us, in a sense, kind of constrained in time density. So as they are loosening, and weakening these layers, these magnetic layers, these are what we call like buffer zones. It's also time lag. All of this is starting to lift out of the body and out of the field and unlock where we were feeling really dense and contained and compressed and blocked. It's unlocking that. It's opening us up to new energies that I, I I can't even imagine what I'm seeing and happening. It's opening up new timelines. It's opening up new opportunities, new awareness, new understandings. And it's also as these kind of buffer zone magnetic layers release, it's releasing what was like held inside the cellular memory. So we're releasing a lot of trauma, emotional and physical trauma, and cellular memory. And this, I think, is what's causing the body to feel really uh, uh, weakened or, or exhausted by this clearing of the dense trauma and, and memories, especially could be like persecution memories, past life, you know, harm, <laughs> you know, these kinds of things are really lifting up to people's awareness now and clearing. And so I see it, of course, as something very exciting. And I, I 
do see more coming. We just had one in the last couple days. It was over like Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and now we're in the release part of it, so it's kind of like we're dragging right now. But then as we release it, then we start feeling stronger again. We start feeling more vibrancy and vitality and energies that we couldn't even access before. So it's really exciting. Um, I think this is also what will help open up more global awakening too. So we'll see more and more people really starting to understand kind of the bigger picture of what's happening with the ascension right now. So all, all in all, amazing, but still, boy, the body's having some trouble with it. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's why when we need the sleep, that is very important to mm -hmm. really listen to that, right, yes. and take the time for ourselves. So as we're releasing, then this could be in a multitude of ways. Could it be just like a recognition, maybe a feeling comes up and all we need to do is be aware of it and release it? And then in the dream space, when things come up in the dreams, those are clearings too. Yes, they are. Yeah, you might you might be tapping into maybe some past life or this life trauma or memory that shows up in your dream state or in meditation, and especially kind of tune into how it feels. If it just feels really uncomfortable or disturbing, know that it's trying to release out of your body, out of your field, and and you can you know we'll walk through the steps today of how to help. Uh, accelerate the clearing so you're you're just kind of supporting this process and and if, if possible even accelerating the the release and clearing so it doesn't have to drag out for weeks yeah it's it's instead of feeling um, uh, upset by it or kind of fighting it or rejecting it see if you can just hold space with what's clearing we're really not meant to have to relive this trauma or the memories it's more of just becoming aware like you said observing it and then kind of like you're on the sidelines and you're helping clear it out of your own body and field okay because energetically that does hang around in the field when you yeah. take a look at that what is it what does it look like are you seeing it in their aura are you seeing it with your third mm -hmm. eye with my third eye, I see where, I see, like even today I was doing sessions with clients and I saw the latest magnetic uh, level. Uh, it's like a, kind of like a thick, heavy band and it was almost out of their, their field but maybe like held on with like a little string, you know, and we just helped it cut loose and lift it out. Um, I see it come out with kind of almost look like smoke in their field or or shadow. That's more of the denser emotional like pain releasing. Um, you you actually could even feel as you clear the the pain and the trauma that whoever uh, that was attached to could have been a past life soul aspect that it was releasing from and then that aspect could actually integrate more into you. It's kind of like a shamanic soul retrieval process. This is also happening. So we're, as we clear kind of these dense layers off that past life memory um, or trauma from that past life, it allows that soul to integrate in with the rest of the soul in the heart space. So we're, this is where we're getting more understanding and knowledge and, and soul gifts and skill base abilities increasing because these aspects can now integrate with us. Yes, okay, that is beautiful and it's mm -hmm. really helpful to be mindful of that and I know the work that you do really does assist people with a really powerful tool to, to clear this out and then to then be aware of our other aspects. So let's yes. talk about that a little bit. It's very interesting because, Meg, you are a leader in this, um, on the Ascension Path, and are helping so many people. And you had, an, you know, you've been on um, this path for a while. You know, there are some that come in quite rapidly, but you've been at this for a while. and. I find it interesting because it was a, a kundalini awakening and it allowed you to um, allow the energy of an angelic soul walk in, the divine feminine of Metatron. That's amazing. Yes, it was. I think 
not originally planned to be, I think I was originally planned to work from the other side to help with this planetary ascension. Because I, um, once I came in, I started getting a lot of information very available and seeing that my soul came from the future and came dropped into this time to help kind of like get into the ground troops and get into the planetary field and help raise the frequency here because we weren't we weren't escalating fast enough. We were we were still pretty locked in the matrix, and we're having trouble to kind of reach this timeline that we're in right now, this ascension timeline. So, my my um, soul decided, all right, let's let's help. So we're going to come in, and instead of coming in and you know going through you know birth and childhood and all that, I basically came in as an awakened soul into an adult, and and. We kind of co coexisted there for some quite a few years, actually, as I helped her kind of clear here her karma and her contracts and, and her trauma. And, and so she got a lot of extra boost of help uh, through this ascension. And then eventually I was helped her transition. And I could basically take over the body and the life and, and, and get it you know, like lined up with my own blueprint. Um, and that's been a, quite a process for 25 years, because it was in 1994 that I, that I joined here. But it also gave me a lot of understanding and experience um, of how this process is working for everyone who is here, and so that I had kind of a good reference point to be able to help uh, the clients I work with and the big groups that I'm working with to go through these steps themselves and really accelerate through the process so we don't get stuck, right? And we don't get waylaid or distracted or, or, or forget, you know, and, and drop back into the mind control programming. So there's a lot of um, just kind of hand holding people through the step, guiding them through the step. Uh, some people have called me like a midwife, you know, just helping them birth their soul again in this life so they can be really fully active and doing their purpose, doing their mission. So it has been an interesting 24, 25 years because it hasn't really been about me. I haven't, you know, I'm not married. I don't have children. It wasn't really about me um, building a personal reality. It was really more of just coming in and helping get this ascension going and kind of guide it along the way over the years. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up and being oh, such sure. a beautiful way shower because it really helps us all make sense. And, you know, I've even spent time with you and it, it's just really wonderful that you are there to assist in that way. It's really important oh, and it's very empowering. So uh, how is the process working? Because there are steps that we can take to accelerate these mm -hmm. clearings. So yeah. what we're doing talking, oh, first I wanted to ask you, with the solar winds that are coming in, um, mm -hmm. when they come, they do feel different than the flares. It's very interesting. Yeah. Does it ever translate into the weather? I found that we've had some unusual winds where oh, I good am. Point. Yes, That's interesting, yeah. huh? More, more winds, more of the aurora borealis, right? That's all magnetic uh, flare. You know, this it's all showing up in the um, as these beautiful light demonstrations in the magnetic field. Um, yes, so it is affecting not only us on an energetic level, but yeah, we are starting to see symptoms of it also in the physical Earth as well. Affects, it could be affecting our animals, right? Because when the magnetic fields shift. Um, that's when I first noticed it a couple months ago. It's like, hmm, I don't see normally the birds out. You know what I mean? It's like the animals weren't weren't acting typical. <laughs> they were they were also feeling the magnetic shifts and, and acting differently. So you might also see that happening in your pets or the just kind of nature around you as well. And so when you are feeling this, do you feel this in your body at all? Um, yeah. And what do you do to get yourself through? Um, I first kind of feel it like um, a tingle. It's beginning to, so it's kind of an elevated presence of, of so in a sense, think of like your own magnetic field is going up in frequency, right? It's, it's shifting higher. Um, and that then allows these top layers to release and lift out. 
So I first feel it as the shift in, in, in the field around me. And then I begin to notice that I'm getting really, really, really tired. And I need you know, 10, 11 hours sleep at night. And, and I'm like, oh boy, OK, we've got another one coming in right now. So I just try to stay focused inwards on what it's going to unlock within me. And I begin to start to feel the movement, kind of things wiggling loose a little bit. And I might even begin to become aware of what it is usually. It's, um, for me, it's been a lot of uh, trauma coming out. And it could be from this life or past life, uh, especially if there's persecution in the past lives. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people through these months. And many will just start spontaneously sobbing, you know, it's just like an emotional mm -hmm. release as that's coming out. Um, you might feel a little wobbly because your magnetic field is getting adjusted, so you aren't feeling as stable. So that's a good thing to ground uh, onto the nature if you can, ground onto the light grid. Um, so you're holding as steady as you can as this is trying to wiggle loose and release. So it's, um, it's just a bit of, of knowing that it, something really magical is happening. And so the more that you understand that, then you can work with it and, and help it. And because um, on the other side of it is these, this new energy coming in. So even um, like a couple of weeks ago, I found a whole new timeline popped in front of me where I could be moving. I wasn't even planning any of this. So it may not happen, but it was a whole new uh, opportunity just showed up. So I'm thinking, OK, it's opening more of what I call like our soul life. And I've been commanding, demanding, I want to live my soul life. And so I think it's opening up more opportunity, like opening more doors so you can live more fully your soul life now. Isn't that wonderful? That is so yeah. beautiful. OK, yeah. I love how you said you're commanding it and demanding yep. it. Really, absolutely. And it must uh, come from a place with no fear, absolutely right. no fear. And now let's talk a little bit about, you know, feeling wobbly or sobbing or the trauma. We feel it coming yeah. out and the dizziness. Um, yeah. I like when you said focus on what it's going to unlock. You know, our minds tend to go haywire on us and really keep us distracted from allowing it's almost like we need to allow the dizziness we need to allow yeah. the wobbly wobbly right wobbly, yeah well it's it's because if you think about it it is your your buffer fields kind of this this time density magnetic buffer fields that have kept us heavy and and dense and and like grounded to the earth, right? It's kind of the gravity that's holding us to the earth. And as that gets thinner and weaker, we don't have that in a way to hold us grounded and balanced. We can't rely on it like we used to. It's weakening, it's thinning. So now we have to be the one that grounds and balances ourselves. And so there's techniques you can do to, you know, just getting out in nature and, and locking into that field of order and coherence will help. Um, breathing, deep breathing will help start to, to kind of, well, it helps with the releasing, but it also helps you kind of come into your core. I think too many of us are living up in the head, you know, up in the mind. So if you find you're getting dizzy, what I recommend is, visualize or imagine you're getting some more earth energy at your feet where you, if you can't get out in nature, visualize you're putting your feet in a garden or, or the sand at the beach, but get some earth energy there. So you kind of pull yourself to the light grid and you're getting rooted and stable. So the Disney's can kind of settle in. One thing you can, might want to try is you can weave an infinity of light between the inner ears and try to bring a balanced equilibrium back into the body. Um, breathing is really good. If you can breathe from your belly, you breathe out what's releasing out. So it's not, um, I call it like a, a pass-through uh, method. So we're trying to elevate and advance where we're no longer having to clear through the physical, but we can clear directly from the energetic body and out. And so we can pass through the physical as much as we can. Of course, if there's cellular memory, that is going to come out of the physical. Because that's one thing that uh, Metatron kept telling me is the energy will 
release in the same way it came in. So if it was fear coming in, it's going to feel like fear coming out. So the dizziness may be caused by some of that. It could be disturbing energy that's being released out because it's in its same form. But try not to personalize it and attach to it. Like, don't let the ego attach to that fear. Just go, OK, we got old fear releasing, and I'm just going to deep breathe that out and, and, and spin that out. That way, then you're, you're kind of doing a pass-through method instead of having to really you know, physically feel all this. Yes, OK. I love that we can clear it from the energetic body. Yeah, really yeah. very powerful. And so this is what you're all about. You really do help accelerate everyone on this journey. And we're going to do, let's do an ascension activation. And then I want to go and take some questions from our community and see what is going on with everyone there. So we talked earlier about a way that we really truly can accelerate the clearings. Can you talk a little bit about that? And then let's do an activation. Okay, so what we're in this whole magical process of is activating our own energy torus. If that's a new term to you, it's T-O-R-U-S. Our energetic torus is the kind of the circular flow of life force from our core channel. Um, it comes up into the heart space and spirals out and comes down the channel from the higher self into the heart space and spirals out. The Merkaba is what we call the, the geometry of the torus. And so this is the double um, tetrahedron, upward facing tetrahedron and a downward facing tetrahedron. And as that rotates in and around your body, it creates this torus flow, this torus momentum. Well, all of that kind of got deactivated and disconnected when we were born in the lower 3D time matrix. So we're in the process of kind of reactivating all that and getting it up and running. As you notice, it is a, it is a spiraling moment, momentum. It's a spiraling motion. And even what I described is the Taurus system, that exists literally down at the atomic level and also at the cosmic level of our uh, galactic center. So this is a, a patterning of energy flow and of pure creation that runs through the entire universe. So from the microcosm to the macrocosm. And it's running inside us at the atomic level and also around the body in your energetic field. So our goal is to get all that running and all that operating for us. Because when it is in a continuum, when it's literally spiraling life force 24-7 into your core, then you become your own sustainable ecosystem. You are have continual endless life force fueling you. And at that point then, we begin to disconnect from the planetary system. In a way, you become like your own universe. You're, you're sustaining yourself now. So to do this, we need to work with spiraling energy, because that's what we're trying to get up and running again in our field. And so I have been guided over the years since I, since I joined here in 94 of working with the template of this universe, this creatal, creation template of this universe, and it's called Metatron's Cube. If that's new to you, it's made of 12 circles that center around a 13th circle. And it basically demonstrates um, the, the powerful 12 around 1 concept that basically is the, is the foundational template of everything in our universe. We're in a 12-dimensional universe. We have 12 chakras. You see it on, you know, in our time. We have you know, 12 uh, of our clock. 12 of our astrology, like this repeats everywhere. So when we start to work with it, it will actually start to activate and open up a spiraling vortex energy around your body and around your aura, and everything begins to activate. And this is, this is when you are in a spinning momentum, it's increasing the energy frequency of your atoms. So everything starts to spin faster. And when we can oscillate faster, 
we are increasing our energy frequency. And we're starting to bring ourselves back into order and balance and get that torus and the Merkaba activated and running. So this is, again, of course, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's advanced technology, but it has been in the universe, I think, since creation. And we're just starting to remember it. We're starting to work with it. And it's here for us to use at this time on the planet to accelerate not only the activation of our own light body, our own Taurus, but working with Earth. Earth is a Taurus, so working with Earth's planetary field. Um, our sun is a Taurus, you know, working with the sun's planetary field. So it, it's, it just connects to everything the more that we work with it. But the key is to spin faster. A lot of times people complain, well, Meg, she talks too fast. I can't, I can't work with her. I can't follow her. Well, the reason is because I'm spinning fast. <laughs> I've been spinning for 25 years here. <laughs> and I, I want can't slow spin. down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we want your spin, though. We do, we do. <laughs> and then you um. will be going fast, too. <laughs> Oh, okay, and it's all to bring in back the order and balance. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, right at the, that center point of a spinning torus, it's called zero point. It is a vacuum state, so it is um, neutral. There, there's no gravity in it. It's still. It's calm. And so if you can create that zero point calmness, in the center of your body, you know, right there around your heart solar plexus, that's the, the core center, you get that nice, calm stability and balance and, and peace inside you, then you can handle whatever life brings you. <laughs> you basically can, you know, you, you're, you're, you're not getting triggered, you're, right? You're not reacting. You're getting really calm and neutral and you're able to hold your balance point so you can handle what comes in. But the beauty of it, too, because it is a vacuum state, you know, in basic physics, what does a vacuum do? It tries to fill itself. So if you maintain zero point in your core, you're able to pull more of your soul presence into the body, into the heart and solar plexus, into your core, and you now have divine soul presence powering you up. And that's our goal, is to embody the soul, build that connection back again, because the matrix disconnected us from our soul, so you're doing the healing and clearing, so you're and opening that vacuum space inside where it's still and neutral, and whew, it just starts pulling the soul into your core again, and you're now becoming more whole and, and united and complete again. Beautiful. Soul presence, divine soul, soul presence. presence. A uh, very high vibration. I mean, just listening to that, we can feel it. But this is a journey into the heart center to that zero point. So yeah. let's go ahead and do okay. an activation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the steps, but I'm also going to connect with you remotely to help you. Um, just do your best. Uh, where I recommend people to sit with their feet on the floor if they can because we're going to ground with our feet chakras. And also using more of your right brain, which is our multidimensional psychic intuitive brain. This is the part of our brain that we use to visualize. Uh, we are very much living in a left brain society, and so we have, you know, we haven't been using our right brain as much as we want. So we're going to, you know, start putting more of your soul light into the neural pathways in the right brain really boost that up, get that opened more, so you can go through the, the activation steps using more of your uh, intuitive mind. If you find you kind of go back into the thinking mind of the left brain, just stop and breathe and focus back in to the right brain, because it's also what we use to receive, and we want to be this open receiver and receiving in the soul, receiving in the blessing, so using that right brain to do it. Okay, so with that said, let's Let's just take a couple of slow, deep breaths. We're going to start moving the energy into this core center. So we're really working on developing that core zero point. So just breathing in light into the core, into the heart, in the belly, the solar plexus. And then as you release out, just breathe out any stress or body tension, any worries of the day. Just let it go. And as we're breathing in, 
let's go ahead and first start getting grounded. So anytime I open a vortex energy around my body, I want to make sure I'm, I'm really secured because you don't want any of that uh, dizziness or, or vertigo. So we're sitting feet chakras locking onto the light grid of our 5D earth plane. So the light of your feet chakras, light to light to the light of the grid. And there you go, making a connection. And you're coming into your core, getting grounded from the heart center. Let's connect to spirit. So making a command and intention to connect to Mother, Father, Source. Connect to your God self, your soul presence. Connect to your spirit team of angels, guides, ascended masters. We're also connecting to Gaia and nature, bringing in the nature spirits, the devas, bringing in the elementals of air, fire, water, earth, and ether to do the alchemy. And then finally, we're connecting to Archangel Metatron, Lord Metatron, and embedding Metatron's cube under your feet and your grounding. So it's made of a, a circle of a six circles on the outside, inner six circles on the inside, you're going to step into the center, 13th circle, get into the middle of it. There we go. And as you connect to it, it starts to activate with your energy, with your light. And those 12 circles start to rise up and around the body. And they come up and they work like tuning forks. They're toning the 12 sound waves of our 12 dimensions into your body. So we hear this with our human ear as the ohm tone. So we can just imagine they're ohming inwards and this begins to activate them and they start to rotate right to left. So this is counterclockwise around you. Now this is a feminine vortex so it's expanding outwards. So imagine it's kind of like a V-shape from your feet out around the body and aura. There we go. Get a good, nice opening. And what we want to do is spin it up faster towards the speed of light or even faster. So let's keep it going. And this is why you want to ground first. You want to stay in your body, stay in your gut there, in your core, as this is accelerating up faster. Whew, here we go. Is it spinning up? It's starting to unlock time density, time compression. It's starting to unlock the gravitational fields. And whoa, there it goes. It opens everything up so we can actually access the quantum field of your energy. So this is your energy body. We can get into it now. Imagine you're stepping into your chakra pillar, your chakra channel. This goes right up the center of your body. We're going to bring the spin momentum into the channel. So it starts at your feet, starts to rotate counterclockwise up to the root chakra and then all the way up the body, up the physical chakras, past the crown into the transpersonal chakras. There's five above your head, 12 total. So as you're moving up, imagine you're opening your channel directly up to your higher self. Because as we get up, up, up to the top, there we go, all the way up, <sighs> spiral up, and we get up to the top of the channel, up to the top of the pillar, and you're connecting directly to your higher self. This is your guardian and your gatekeeper of your channel. I always see it as a beautiful light being and I make a heart connection with my higher self. Whew, there you go. Because all of this got disconnected in the 3D matrix, so we're reconnecting. Now, as we connect to the higher self, appears this 12th gate, 12th chakra. It's like a crystalline doorway, crystalline gate. We're going to go through it and go into 13th dimension and higher into the field of light of the Godhead. This is what we call the virtual particle field of electrons in quantum physics. We're moving in, letting go of our physical self for a minute and just imagine you're becoming waves of light and you're starting to blend into this abundant universal field of all that is. All possibilities, infinite possibilities. Whoa, letting yourself like you're in a golden pool and you're merging in, blending in. Because there's no separation here. This all exists in oneness. Ooh, there you go. Just connecting to spirit, connecting to our abundant universe collecting to all potential, 
all possibilities. We're also going to connect to your soul presence in the quantum field. So this is going to be where you are connecting through your unique energy frequency, your own vibration. It's like your fingerprint. It's unique to you. We call it the soul signature. So make an intention. Now I'm going to now connect to where my soul exists in the universe through my unique soul frequency. And it's just like dialing to a radio station. You're starting to lock on to it. And we want to set the intention to connect to your soul presence in all timelines and dimensions and planes of existence through your soul vibration, your soul frequency. All right, everybody's locking on. And we're still in the spinning vortex, so now we're going to start bringing the soul presence back down the channel, down the chakra pillar. Your soul is made of golden light and your sound waves, your tones, your frequencies. So let's breathe inwards now, spinning down, calling in the soul presence to drop down and into the body. There we go, all the way down and in. It's streaming in to all the chakras, especially consider your heart center like this upward facing container, just filling the heart with soul love, with soul light. There you go, with soul consciousness, soul truth, calling in your soul blueprint, your soul code. Oh, it's coming into the brain and down into the heart. You're calling in your soul gifts your soul wisdom and knowledge. Keep breathing it in, spinning it down and in, opening and receiving, calling in your soul mastery and purpose. We want all this to wake up inside. As it's coming in, it's like building like a big golden sun in your core. It's starting to radiate soul light presence. Yes, I love it. Just building and filling. And it's getting also into these magnetic fields that wrap around the chakras and the organs. So as you're breathing in soul light presence, imagine it's also starting to kind of overflow the chakras and go into the magnetic fields wrapped around them. And this is where you begin to build more soul magnetism. You're drawing in what matches you, your divine you, all that support can now start to come in where you were feeling disconnected before because you were disconnected from your soul presence. So as this is building inside, it's starting to build soul magnetism. Now let's work with what just got released in this week. So we're in the spin and so energies can come in like we just did. We pulled soul light in, soul presence in, but we can also use it to spin out what doesn't match us, what doesn't serve us. So let's do a release, a clearing, especially if you've been having some physical symptoms. Let's first just start to clear up and out any magnetic layer that may be kind of clinging like on its last thread. So imagine we're just doing an outward breathing out, spinning out, calling up and out. Any magnetic layers that are ready to disconnect and release out of the body, out of the aura. Ooh, there we go, and it lifts off you. And the vortex will spin this up to source light to be transmuted to light. Oh, there we go. So as we clear magnetic layers out of our own field, we're lightening up the planet as well. Think of it as if we were all like, you know, 20 tons of weight. As we keep releasing density, releasing heaviness, we're lightening our load and we're lightening the planet. Oh, there goes more. And as these layers lift off, Let's do another release. So uh, I'm going to bring in some diamond light of source. Imagine it's kind of like you're under a waterfall of it, like a shower. It's just flowing down through your channels and meridians, through the chakra pillar. We're just lifting up and out any trauma or, or cellular memory that's ready to clear from this life or past lives, this emotional pain or suffering. Oh, here we go. Whew, just breathe it out, command it out, and just bless it and return it to source. And you're freeing yourself from that pain and suffering and memory and density and heaviness. Whoa, there we go. 
you might feel like some karma is clearing. Ooh, just getting free of any persecution memory, persecution fears. Ooh, there goes more. So that we're just lightening up, lightening up our aura. And let's go back into the Core Center again. We're going to use the Infinity Figure 8 to loop right there at the heart solar plexus. So it's kind of in the upper belly, right around the heart, heart area. And we're going to weave it around the left side, back to center, over to the right side, back to center. And as we're weaving the infinity, we're calling all the energy to come into the center point, to come into union and balance and harmony and coherence. And we will release out any disharmony or opposition or negative polarity. There we go. Whew, up and out of the core center of the body. Whew, release it out. Up to source light. There we go. So as we remove the negative polarity, we're starting to create that zero point stillness at the center of your infinity, right there in your core center. And it starts to get very still and neutral. No, it's non-polarized now. We just removed the polarity. It's getting neutral. And it's starting to open up the vacuum state in the core center. And this is the core center of your Merkaba. It's where the two tetrahedrons overlap. There we go. And we're seeing the soul light start to pulse right in the center point in that vacuum space, so it pulls more of your God self in, pulls more of your higher self down and in, pulls your soul light to really build and concentrate it in the core center. There you go. Whew. And this is helping to activate more of your Merkaba geometry to create the torus rotation, the torus flow. You just kind of breathe into your into your heart and belly there for a minute and let that soul shimmering crystal and light pulse whew, in the core center of your light body, of your Merkaba and Taurus. And everything is calm and still and balanced and neutral. And it allows you to pull more in. That supports you, pulling in. So let's set that intention. I call in, I command in my soul's life to activate and open up so I can live it freely and fully. You're on your path of light and calling it in now. And we set that into motion and spinning it in from the quantum field of all that is into the now moment in your heart, in your core center, your zero point, calling it in from all possibilities. There it goes. It comes in. You are the anchor point of it. You're grounding it in, not only into your aura, but also to the planetary field. And right on your path of light, right on your the light grid, Okay, we're spinning really fast. It's all coming in. Just keep calling it in, breathing it in, seeing yourself living your soul's life, feeling what that would be like. Whew, there we go. Is that anchors in? Whew. That completes our activation for today. And so it is. And so it is. Beautiful. Just feel the connection there with that pulsing soul light. Yeah. Really quite powerful. This is life changing, life transforming. Wow. Thank you, Meg. You're welcome. My pleasure. Okay. This is where you that can really accelerate the ascension using these steps. Yes. Yes. What a beautiful process and um so we invite our listeners to, again, listen to this if you joined us in the middle of that. But that is a really powerful process, and we can really command and demand our soul, and we can receive that support. 
a beautiful mm -hmm. time for this. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to take some callers. We have time for a few, but I, okay. I first want to talk a little bit about the opportunity that we have for people to work with these teachings on a deeper level, because that's when we're really going to see great change and great shift. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people who report feeling uh, depressed or um, desperate oh, yeah. even. Yeah. This is yeah. really a way to come into soul connection, right? So you've got a special offer that you're going to talk about, but this really is one of the deepest inner journeys that we can take. Yes, I, I, I've been using it these 25 years and I, it's just become a part of my routine. It's kind of like this is a new lifestyle and and that way then you're always present and you're always responding to what the world's bringing you and you're able to go in and adjust and self-correct and you know release that and bring in this. So it think of it like you're becoming this this creator God and you're working with your higher self and your, your spirit team and with source. So it's very dynamic and active. You're always present with it. Um, so what I did is I put together some training based on the, all the steps that I went through myself and what I was observing coming through in guidance and, and even client sessions. I mean, I have to tell you, client sessions have been like my university, just really seeing how to apply this. And, and I've learned so much even from other people's higher selves, too. It's just been awesome. So I put together this training material. Um, it's, it, this is the first level of my quantum access technique. Uh, I have three training classes. This is the first one. It gives you all the fundamentals of how to work with the technique. There's a combination of audio meditations that literally will guide you through the steps um, they were recorded while in this quantum vortex, so it's a timeless vortex, so they're actually just as effective no matter when you play them or listen to them. I have to even say when I edit them, I start going into trance and <laughs> I'm following the, the activations. Mm -hmm. It's pretty funny. So that's how powerful these are. So we have some fundamental vortex uh, uh, meditation activation for you to get started. There's also a 40-minute healing activation called Heal, Clear, and Break Free. And this is great for right now with all that's coming up from the solar winds. So you can use that more when you have some time to do some deep healing process. This will help you. And then I included the first uh, level training. And so there's five modules, and each module has a video of me teaching this. This was actually a course I taught, and I videotaped it. So it has, you know, even uh, questions from the from the students in there, and exercises, and uh, workbooks that you can read. Training materials this is very com comprehensive, and it's. Uh, learning about the alchemy of vortex energy and what we just uh, sampled and and working with your Taurus, starting to activate your container of light and with the sacred geometry of alchemy, Metatron's cube, getting really comfortable working with a vertical flow of energy up and down your 12-dimensional chakra pillar, um, learning how to neutralize the polarity out of the field so you can hold that zero point and get out of linear time. So this is where we're, we're kind of disconnecting from that time matrix and starting to be in what we call the eternal now. And that opens up everything. So you start to clear away ego attachments and sabotaging patternings and all of the stuff that has really kind of been challenging us while we were in more of that left brain society. Um, then we begin the right brain activation and really working with moving more of your light consciousness uh, into the right brain, opening up. That's your that's your multidimensional brain. You want to be able to work with it, and then start uniting the two brains so they're balanced. And then finally, working with the soul blueprint. We started today just you know bringing more in, but it it needs to kind of in a sense replace the human DNA template uh, and replace it with your soul DNA. So this is 
getting, I, I think of the blueprint kind of like a user's manual or a map, you know, and it starts bringing in the guidance that we need from the higher self and how to, you kind of navigate this process step by step. And so the blueprint is what's been guiding me and it also helps activate uh, kind of on a time release DNA code that will help you continue to advance. And so all of that is in the package, and I just as part of my mission to help you know bring this to the world and, and offer it. So if you resonate with it, I'd love you to get started with it. Beautiful. That is available on the special offer button on this web page. A comprehensive course to activate the multidimensional brain and bring the soul blueprint online. Very cool. Thank you so much for your work. Again, we do invite our community to check it out. Okay. Well, um, it is very interesting to see you in action as well. So now I would like to take some questions. And, uh, you know, some are feeling um, feeling the fear of the ego. Um, it mm. feels like we're releasing different aspects of ourself. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how we can surrender through the heart as we release the ego? Okay, so I see the ego as kind of our lower primal, um, less developed kind of shadow self. and. It's kind of been running the life, you know, uh, up until we start our activations, our ascension, and it and it's so it's a kind of a, a shift in power from where the ego is controlling the life to now we're really aligning with the soul presence and the soul wisdom, and and one of the things I it really struck me is you know our souls they are eternal they live beyond just this life, right? They live in all time, so they can see the past, the present, and the future. And so if we start to listen where the soul is talking to us, and it's mostly through what I call the heart brain, it's coming in more through your sensory body, because what did we just do? We pulled the soul into the heart. So that's where your soul is, is trying to communicate to you, is through sensory input and empathing and, and just kind of tugging you by the heart into the new direction that the soul is going. Well what happens? The ego starts fighting this. It's like, no, no, wait a minute, I'm in control. I don't want this happening. And, and so this is where we get into a kind of a push-pull for a bit between the ego and the soul. And who, who's, who's going to run this life? So one of the things that I was guided to do, and it has really helped, is, okay, so think about this, this ego self is like this shadow primal self inside us. And I would just kind of lock on to where I would feel it fighting all of this and, and you know, pushing its its weight around. I would kind of feel into it and, and, and kind of lock my focus onto it. And then I would use the spin of the vortex and start moving the ego back out of the body and in the aura behind the body and into the light of your aura, of your Taurus. And by doing this, so we're just kind of focusing on doing that now. Because we do not want that ego in our channel, ever. So we're starting, there we go, we're just starting to say, okay, we're putting you where you need to be. You're going to go into the light, in the Taurus, and you're going to follow the soul that's filling that channel, like walking behind it, in a sense. And by doing this, okay, so I'm already starting to feel things shift, because then it's kind of this passing of the baton of who's in power. So we're moving the soul into the channel, into the heart space and into the higher mind. And the ego needs to follow the soul now. One of the things I noticed by doing this is it's kind of like we're getting ourselves out of the way and letting the soul come in and, and, and really be present. The other thing, too, I noticed is because the soul has planned this life and planned the blueprint, it knows what it's doing. If I would just listen and follow, everything went well in life. If I listen to the ego, I'd get in trouble and make bad decisions, right? <laughs> get myself in trouble. So I was like, all right, none of this anymore. So I had enough evidence to show my ego, all right, we're doing better following the soul, so cut it out, you know, let's follow the soul. And it worked because all that ego needs is some evidence that this is a better plan and it will start to follow it better. 
so it's just kind of the initial shift of power that it might fight a bit. But also mm -hmm. I feel like as we move it into the light in the Taurus, it gets lighter and lighter. And so I don't hear or feel its presence like I used to. It's in a sense, I told it, you're coming with me. You're going to ascend with me. So you're coming into the light. Oh, I like that. Yeah. OK, so the surrender of the ego, moving it back into the back of the aura, into the light, and yeah. saying, you're going to come with me. Yes, mm -hmm. all right. OK. And it doesn't fight as much. It doesn't fight. We, can make, we could make it the observer, right? It could yeah. be the observer. Okay, and getting and out of our for own the ride. <laughs> coming yeah. for the ride. You get to sit there the and ride. come for the ride. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to a caller now. I'd like to unmute. Um, it looks like we are going to Seattle, Washington. Cell phone ending in 6318. Hello, you're unmuted. What is your name, please? Hello? Hi. Hi. Sorry, I had a thing with my phone happen right when that was happening. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? My name is Kari. Hi, Kari. Hi, Kari. And th thank you for this call. I've really been enjoying it, questions that I've kind of been asking my team about. So, um, And also the, the ego, kind of the ego thing has been coming up with me, with mm -hmm. me doing kind of my work and sole purpose. And then the ego kind of comes in, and I kind of play this game of, like, even with, like, groups of friends of um, not being acknowledged for the work that I do and kind of my presence and doing healing with people. Sometimes it's kind of like almost like they fall asleep. Um, and if you okay. have any. Yes. So that's actually, um, that happens a lot with my group sessions is, I think what I found, Kari, was happening was they weren't really so much falling asleep. They were going into deep trance. Mm -hmm. And the re reason it's happening is this left brain of ours is only available in the lower three dimensions of the physical. So if we go up our channel and we start opening up the chakras and we're going into a deeper meditative state, a trance state, we're bypassing the left brain. It can't go with us into these higher dimensions because it's only in the three dimensions. This is why we're using our right brain, which is our multidimensional brain. And as I began to work with that more, I was able to stay more alert and not trance out mm -hmm. as I was going into these higher dimensions. So I think part of what's happening is you're expanding them into uh, more access into higher dimensions, but their left brain isn't cognitive of it. It's not. It's not able to kind of go with you, and mm -hmm. and so let me just ask if there's anything more to add to that. So your ego was feeling like you weren't being acknowledged. Yeah, there's partly that, and then it's like, how do I validate that what I'm doing <laughs> is real, and you know, almost like right. kind of getting monetary value for it and having right. more clients to come see me. So it's like that, okay. you know, I want to say like tw twist. Um, I, boy, do I know this one. Because in the earlier years, um, it was like working kind of like in the void. I didn't get any feedback. I didn't know if anything was working. You know, it's just kind of, yeah. a, I, had to, I had to go on trust that my, my soul is getting stuff done in the sessions. And it was because I eventually started to, get feedback, but I think let's go into where that's not happening for you, because it wasn't happening for me in the beginning either. The other thing they had me do is once you would finish a session or, or a treatment or whatever you're doing in service, uh, they told me, take that energy of that, like right after you're done, and mm -hmm. make it like a precious jewel, like a pearl or a diamond or a ruby, and you're going to pull it in and into your heart space into like a treasure chest and acknowledge it first yourself. Okay. Because what was happening was as soon as I would be done with the session, my ego would go after it and start ripping it up and tearing it apart and telling me I was a, you know, a loser and nothing was working. And they're like, you've got to stop this. You cannot let your ego do that. So that's when I would protect it. And, 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 and as you're 
depositing these precious jewels inside of everything that you just accomplished, it builds. And so it starts to create an inner sense of accomplishment and um, confidence. Okay. Because it's real. This is all energy. It's all real. Yeah. It's all happening. Okay. Don't let it don't let it drift away out into the astral plane. It'll just get destroyed. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it okay. completely makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. I just I yeah, thank you for that. And I just wanted to say thank you for your work too, and you have definitely helped open me up and expand me in many ways. So Oh I'm I'm so well, I thank, just you, to say thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Thank and you. And can I ask one more question? Um, mm -hmm. And this is regards to your work with your um, your offer. Um, mm -hmm. Is it different than like the if I'm going to pronounce this right the Zeptepe? It record. is different. And, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's more it's much more in depth training of kind of the mechanics of what we're doing here, whereas Zeptepe is kind of going back in time to the ancient Egyptian uh, uh, civilization where. We were operating more like divine humans back then, before the fallen consciousness came in. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a bit of a, a, a different kind of a, a viewpoint on it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Sure. Thank you, Kari. All right. Yes, and again, um, aligning with soul wisdom using the vortex energy, it is really very special. So. Um, we, again, are very uh, excited for your special offer so that we can work deeper with your teachings. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I'd like to now go to Carla on the web call. Hi, Carla. Hi, Lauren. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Yes. Hi, Carla. Hello. Hi. Hi, Meg. Um, okay, so... I wonder if you could help me uh, in the process. I, I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit stuck. Like uh, I, I haven't found my calling. I'm 51. I, I very much feel attracted to the process. I did the process, and I feel very subtle energies. You know, I always have this doubt, this fear. This, I would like so much to live from my heart and my soul, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I broke my hip in February and I'm recovering from it I don't have any pain but when I think about the future I don't you know I feel so I don't know if you I wonder if you could help me well okay so one of the ways well, I guess to me it's the only way really to learn what our soul purpose is and, and our soul gifts you have to bring that soul inside you um, otherwise, it's just kind of this fantasy, you know, that we think of. So it literally has to viscerally get embodied, bringing the soul inside your heart and your body. Then you start developing a personal relationship with it because it's literally in you. So you're present with it. You're just sitting with it and learning from it and present with it. So it's that's where I would start. I would continue to meditate as much as you can to bring soul inside you. Okay, because that's when you're going to, I didn't, you know, that, that's how I learned who I was, um, is getting it in. Mm -hmm. So that would be the first thing. Part of what feels like being in the void, it's not an easy time to go through, is the, we feel like we're just in this no man's land. It's the void space as we're clearing yeah. out. Okay, well, you're in it, and I was in it for years. You know, it's, exactly. it's where you're exactly. dropping all of the false life plan and the family ancestral stuff, and you're just you're just purging. You're just dropping it all. And so most of your energy is going inwards right now. It's not going outwards. So yeah, there's yeah. not a lot showing up in the outer world yet. But the exactly. more that you're clearing... So it's not a, it's not fun. I, I was very impatient when I was in the void, but it's know that it's not permanent. It will it will segue into you getting into your soul life. But to be able to do that, you got to get the soul inside you. So keep purging and bringing the soul in, because then it incrementally builds your soul magnetism, activates your blueprint. So then these new timelines can start to appear in front of you, where you now have new options showing up that you couldn't have when you were in the void. So it's coming. This year is actually really helping with this. It's really clearing stuff through these solar winds. So you will be 
through the void and on the other side and being able to start to see and feel and sense the soul timeline coming in now. So don't give up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But, you, but you, know, do you do you feel any, because I've had so much, there was so much trauma and violence and so sometimes I feel that I'm, I'm blocked, there's something blocking me and I want to move forward. I have so much this intention to, to live from my soul and my heart. You know, right, right. I don't know if that's so you're, that you keep, this, this keep releasing. Is. Yeah, keep spinning out the violence, spinning out the memory of it, spinning out the energies of it. Like you, you don't uh, see if you can unclaim it. Like it's not mine. So you just start, and even the doubts. I think most of the doubts are actually coming in from the collective programming. It's not even your own doubts. It's trying to stop us from being uh, ac uh, ascending. It's trying to stop our ascension. It's what I call counterforce programming in the collective. It's trying to make us uh, distrust our soul and doubt our soul's abilities. And, and, and so it disconnects us from our power. So what I would do is, um, and we can do this now, is just everyone focus on anywhere that they're feeling doubt or insecure about this or distrust. This is not your energy. And so start stepping back from it and command it out. We command this out of the field, out of the heart, out of the mind out of the aura, Whew. and there you start clearing the chakras, the doubts, the guilt, the shame, the blame, this all gets lodged into these chakras, so we need to clear that out. Yeah, there goes the aura, because it's not your soul signature, so we don't want to allow that in. And when we can then clear the doubt programming, then you're just in presence with the soul. You're just in quiet, and you're able to tune in more because the doubt isn't dis distracting you or, or redirecting you away. So if that pip pops up, spin it out. I tell people, even if you find negative stuff looping in your mind, imagine you're just putting your hand in, grabbing the loop, fling it out. We're just clearing our fields on a massive level right now. So anything that disturbs you, don't allow it. Start clearing it, commanding it out, and mm. you lighten up, and you lighten up, and then the soul comes in more and more, and you start feeling, because it's going to, your purpose is going to come literally from your heart, it's going to pull you to where you, it compels you, you can't not do it, it's going to be so strong in you, so it's more feeling first. Yeah. Do you think it's going to, I know this is a stupid question from everything you said, and I, I, I paid a lot of attention to what you said, but this, this question is inevitable, like, do you think it's going to take long, <laughs> still going to take a long? Well, I guess that depends on what you think is long, because we're in this for the duration. I'm so this is a light, it's, it's your lifestyle. So this is your life. So it's, mm -hmm. it's um, every year you get lighter and lighter and more soul embodiment and it gets stronger and stronger every year. Uh, I do see though that we're heading, this year's pretty powerful, and I see that we're heading towards some more big breakthroughs in 2020. 2020 has some pretty powerful astrology coming in. So this is going to just really kind of shock it through this, the collective again is in 2020. So I, I think things are really picking up speed now, especially since 2012. I mean it was pretty rough back then and things are moving faster now mm. okay yeah okay. thank you Carla okay thank, thank you. you thank you you're welcome well <clears throat> this is our lifestyle our light style right now really <laughs> important and what a beautiful helpful method that you uh, offer with this and so it's really being aware of our energy and our presence and our soul's presence yeah. And the soul signature, oh, just to feel that was really yeah. exquisite. Yes. That's you. That's your divine you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So thank you for this. Let's do one more caller. And this time we're going to Velma in Nova Scotia. Hi, Velma. Hi, Velma. Hi, Warren. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, Meg. Um, yeah. Hi. Hi. You might want to turn might down the speaker so just a little bit, Donna. Okay, okay, sorry. I have, um, I had a serious illness a while ago, and I had, a year before, broken in, in addiction. 
And then when I went through my serious addiction or serious health issue, the addiction came back. And um, lately, it seems like it's trying to peak. Okay. okay. Addiction is interesting, interesting because it is where we are disconnected from the soul. So d addiction is a sign of disconnection. Um, when we begin to connect and bring the soul into the body, you, you are no longer trying to fill an emptiness inside because you're filling it with you, with your divine self, your own light presence. And this begins to... Um, weaken and dissolve out the addictive programming. Uh, a lot of addiction also gets passed to us and from the ancestral patterning of our, our generations back through the birth family. Um, a lot of it comes in that way. Um, some of it could also be coming into the, co the collective programming. And we could also get addictive entities that attach to us that compel us to behave in ways we would never have been doing. So let's say like an alcohol entity or a, a drug entity that they kind of take over our own mind and thoughts and feelings and behaviors and, and, and it's all about the drug, you know, that's, that it controls us. So these are areas to look for, Thelma, um, as we're just kind of tuning in uh, I also feel like it's a presence that's trying to stop your progress, and this is very common as we're, we're, we're rising out of the lower earth and the, the battle zone, basically, of the, of the dark presence. And so let's just, we, we activated the vortex, so it's still spinning around you, so I'm just going to connect with you and imagine we're spinning it up faster. And, and so this is for anybody who senses a dark presence either in them or around them, close around them, that they tend to kind of try to uh, attach and feed on our life force, on our light. So the first thing I would do is counsel and revoke any per per participation or permission in allowing any presence to feed on your light or your life force or your soul presence, for this is against the true law of one. We counsel and revoke it now. We start spinning that dark presence away, 360 degrees out, away from your body, your field. Okay, there you go. It's starting to move. Whew. All right. Beautiful, and I'm also feeling some family patterning of, of addiction. So this is usually where many of the light workers came into families purposefully to come into dark systems. We call us the, the system busters. And we came into these dark systems to bring the crystalline diamond light, the divine light, into those dark systems to start to break them down, to dismantle them. And I did this, and many of us have been doing this. So this is where you came into the dark addiction system bringing your soul light in there, Thelma, so you're really starting to dissolve it and break it down. You have, your light is more powerful than that addiction system. Okay, good. There you go. You're starting to break away from it. And so let's call up and out the family multi-generational patterning code programming for addiction to start to dismantle, break away, Imagine you're kind of unplugging your power from it, your light from it, your life force from it. And we command it out. All right, it's like a big matrix prison cell coming off you. You're pulling your power from it. Get your scissors out. You're cutting the link to the ancestral lineage. Oh, there you go. And as this is releasing, we send it up to Source Light. So you are just blessing it for all that it's allowed you to accomplish in bringing the light into that dark system, but we're no longer allowing it to perpetuate into the planetary collective or for the human race. And there it goes. It's starting to break loose. Now, you may have some consciousness of it still looping in you. That's why I said if you catch it, grab it, fling it out. You're not going to allow this to dominate you anymore. Does that make sense, Velma? Yes, it does. I've actually felt some kind of like a chill tingling up my spine. Yeah, it's coming yeah, it's off the coming body off right the body. now, spinning off. And imagine you're pulling out of like a dark web into your crystalline pillar of light. There you go. You're shifting. 
because that is a dark matrix, dark matrix that is fiction. So yeah, coming into your crystal and pillar of light. And your feet are locking onto your path of light. Good. So we got some, ent got some entities leaving. So see, when, when you remove it, you aren't feeding them anymore. They'll go elsewhere. Good. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So just kind of keep an eye on it. They'll be releasing. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you, Velma. Oh, very powerful work, Meg, and this is really empowering. Again, when we can use a tool like this, a method like this, to really uh, bring our soul in, to recognize our soul signature, we get stronger at this whole process, we accelerate the clearing process, and then it does become easier, wouldn't you say? Like you oh, said, yes. when we recognize it, we can just fling it out. We can just say, no more. So much easier. I When I first started, it was very time, you know, in, intensive and in, trying to just kind of look at all the pieces. And now we, and this is again, switching from left brain to right brain. You know, of course, I was still more left brain then. And so I was looking at all the different pieces, uh, past life and this life. And oh, my goodness. And now as you work more from the right brain, this is top down. So now you're working with whole entire systems and pulling them out. Uh, so it goes way quicker, faster, easier. Yes. 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 yes and so I just want to share personally that um, this whole method and process in my own life has really been helpful for me. Um, we have big dreams, right? And mm -hmm. when we see these programs that limit us, it's really empowering when we can take action and do what we need to do to clear them out. It really does feel empowering. And so this is just really beautiful for the support that it gives all of us to truly step fully onto the mission and to go forward on the ascension path. It really means holding a higher vibration. And so this spinning does take us to that higher vibration, and yeah. it actually makes us stronger at it as well. It keeps us there. It does, and it also, I think for me then, it, it kind of um, allayed the anxiety because then I realized, you know, whatever shows up, I can deal with it. I have the tools and the knowledge to handle it. My soul will help me through it. And also because you're opening more and more outside of the time constraints and into the quantum field, you can access all the solutions you need. So you're never without multiple solutions. And that really calmed me down. I, you know, just, okay, I, I got everything here that I can work with. You know, I've got my, my whole toolkit I can work with. And, and so it's, you're, you're not as... Um, anxious in life. You know, you can just kind of relax in and know you're safe and you have what you need. As a real master, as a real creator. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Quantum Access Training with Meg Benedicte. Again, the special offer is available for our community. And Meg, we thank you so much for that. Well, as we say goodbye, my goodness, it's just beautiful what we see coming ahead in our future and just the importance of really clearing ourselves and, and, and tuning, aligning with our soul wisdom. So as we say goodbye, any last words for our listeners? Yes, I would really work with your process this, at least in the coming six months. My goodness, so much coming in. We have three eclipses this summer. We have the solstice. We have the 80th Lion's Gate. We've got the equinox. Like there is openings coming. I didn't even mention all these solar wind activations as well. So now is the time. If you can make the time, I encourage everyone dive in because the universe is showing up for us this year and really helping us. It's an 11 year. It's a year of mastery. And boy, is the universe helping us with this. So that it may feel overwhelming at times because it's just kind of like boom, 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 right? It just keeps coming, keep coming. But if you 
really hold your neutral space with it, then you can take advantage of it fully instead of feeling like you're just getting like buffered with it all. You know, now, like um, Loren said, be the creator of your reality now. Take advantage of what's happening in the next six months. It's extraordinary. Okay, beautiful. Meg, thank you so much for creating such a beautiful tool, quantum access training, really empowering all of us to stand in our mastery and move through a lot of clearings in a very quick way. Yeah. Thank wow. you, thank you, thank you, Meg Benedicte. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me on the show, Loren. It's been a joy. It's always a joy with you, Goddess. Thank you so much. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, Quantum Access Training with Meg Benedicte. Again, that is available on the special offer button on this webpage. If it resonates with you and you wish to receive the incredible benefits from this, please check that out and make it a part of your life. Well... Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this program, please share it with your friends and loved ones. And we thank you for shining your magnificent light and adding it to the world. This is when we love ourself like no one else can. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music, available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste. Thank you.